my digital content creation strategy for growing a brand fast online. Here's my exact steps that I take to create digital content online. You can follow my strategy to help you grow your brand more quickly. Marketing your brand can be very time consuming, but it's well worth it because if you do it well, it will lead to an increase in sales for your business. When you are creating marketing, always remember that the reason you are doing it is to grow your audience so that you can sell more of your products. As an online CEO, it's your job to sell products. Creating content is a form of promotion. Creating content is all marketing. It's easy to get suckered into thinking that creating content is your main job as an online entrepreneur, but creating content is a form of marketing and that marketing only exists to help you sell more sales. Content creation can be very time consuming and people tell you that you need to be everywhere and do everything. Now, I give the impression that I am everywhere doing all of the things, but I manage to only spend just two days every month creating free content. And out of those two days, I only work three to four hours per day creating content. And the reason why I managed to spend such a small amount of time creating content is because I am very good at repurposing my content. So today I'm going to show you how I repurpose my content and appear to be everywhere when really I am just sharing the same message to many different marketing channels. My name is Kath Kyle and I lead the Hustle Less, Manifest More movement. I help creators and change makers manifest a massive audience and transform millions of lives by creating a magnetic movement using my proven dream business framework. Now I have a free gift for you today. I am giving you my ultimate guide to creating a magnetic movement and in this guide I am sharing with you how you can build your tribe of millions by creating a magnetic movement for your brand. Now, this free guide is a PDF download, but I have also created a video training that walks you through the entire guide. So if you don't like reading, you can watch the video. And if you don't have time to read or watch a video, I've also created an audio training for you so you can listen to it on the go. So if you want to get that free guide, you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash movement guide or click the link surrounding this free content. 10 step digital content creation strategy. There are 10 steps that I take to create and share my mammoth marketing and micro marketing on a regular basis. And for all of these steps, I have templates and processes around everything, which is how I get things done so quickly. My team uses Asana, which is a free project management system. And we use Asana to create tasks, to create projects, to create deadlines and checklists. And we also use Google Sheets to store all of my blog post information and editorial calendars. And then we use Google Docs to write the blog post emails and captions. And what I normally do is I create four blog posts each month. It used to be double, but I've recently cut that in half because I'm focused a lot on creating products at the moment. I might go up to double again in the future, but right now I'm happy with one per week. So from these four blog posts, I also create four podcasts and I also create four videos. And this is what I call my mammoth content, my mammoth marketing that I share everywhere. And I also create some micro marketing content that is derived from my longer form content. So I create two pieces of mammoth content every day and I spend two days in total on content creation, which makes four pieces of content. I post one mammoth marketing piece per week and one micro marketing piece per day. 
And I do change my mind about strategy, but I'm just sharing my strategy right now. So if you're looking for some inspiration for creating your own strategy, you can learn from what I am doing. And the most important thing is that you create a strategy that's right for you and that feels good for you. So here are the 10 steps involved in my digital content creation strategy. Number one, create a blog post. I am first and foremost a writer. Writing is how I get my thoughts together and I love to see the structure of the content on the page in front of me so that I can see easily how it flows together. So what I do is I write all of my blog posts in Google Docs which are then copied into my WordPress blog and formatted on there by my team. So Google Docs makes it very easy to share content with other people. So I have a blog post template that I use every time to create my blog posts. And this template makes it as easy as filling in the blanks. And if you'd like to see all of the steps that I take to get my blog post to the standard where it is likely to show up on the first page of Google, I have an in-depth blog post that walks you through the whole process. So click the link around this content to go to the blog post and then go down to step number one and there is a link there to that blog post which is called how to get your blog to show up on Google and how long it takes. So if you are more of a speaker than a writer, I suggest you start by creating a video or a podcast first and getting that transcribed into a blog post. Either way, I want to encourage you to create a blog post because a blog post is an asset that is owned by you and it's likely to be your biggest source of traffic in the future. Step number two is create a podcast. So as soon as I have created, I've written my blog post and it's fresh in my head, what I do is I then record a podcast version of my blog post. And this is really easy because I just ad lib my content that I've already writ written and add some more personal information into it to make it more personal and enjoyable. And this is really easy because I just ad lib the content that I've already written and I just add in some more personal information into it to make it more personable and engaging. And this is exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm looking at the blog post that I've already written and I am using that as notes for me to create my spoken content. So when I have finished recording, I edit my audio, which doesn't take very long. And then I add in some intro and outro music to the start and the end of my podcast. To create my podcast, I actually create a video version of it because sometimes I just share the video of my podcast on my YouTube channel. And I'm thinking that I'm going to do that today because I am thinking that this content is quite short. So it's probably a good length for me to share on my YouTube channel, but I'm recording both at the same time. And this is how I save a lot of time. To record my videos and also my podcasts, I use Screencast-O-Matic because it's really easy to record either a video of you, your screen, or a combination of both. And I just find the editing capabilities very easy to use and it speeds up my editing more than any other tool I've tried. And I have tried a lot of tools. So step number three is that I create a video for YouTube. So the next thing I do is I create a much shorter version of my podcast, but I record it as a video instead. So I also use Screencast-O-Matic and either record myself using my webcam or I record my screen with a small video of me in the corner and I create a presentation, a slideshow with the text on there. So I just do one of those. But I don't go into as much detail in my video and I aim for around 10 minutes of content. I want my videos to be much shorter than my podcasts and I cut out a lot of the personal information. I don't really talk about myself and my lifestyle on my YouTube video, but I do talk about those on my podcast. So if you're wanting to know more behind the scenes content and you're currently watching the video, then head over to the podcast and listen to the podcast instead, because these are much longer versions. 
in the blog post I create I add in all of the detail but I again I don't put any of that personable information I just save that for the podcast and I don't end up making uh, very many edits to my videos because I've already written the blog post and I have already recorded the podcast. So the content is so fresh in my head that this is a very fast process and I don't end up making that many mistakes. What I used to do and what I still some, sometimes do now is to create a long version of my podcast, extract the audio for my podcast and then cut out big chunks of the long video for my YouTube video. But now most of the time I actually find it easy to record a whole new short video for YouTube then edit a much longer one and decide what to leave in and what to leave out. So I I see how long the podcast is and I maybe cut out the bit where I'm talking about my own life at the, at the start and then if it's really long I might just make a really short version with summary points for YouTube. If it's say around 10 to 15 minutes then I probably will just share that version on YouTube to save time. Step number four is to embed the podcast and the video in my blog post. So my assistant creates my blog posts using WordPress and then she uploads and schedules the videos to YouTube and uploads the podcast to Buzzsprout, which is my podcast host. And if you want any of the links to any of the tools that I'm mentioning, you can click on the link to the blog post and get links to these tools in there. So from there, my assistant grabs the embed codes and embeds both the video summary and the podcast directly into my blog post. And this provides a great multimedia experience to your audience to give them all three forms of media in one blog post. For those who don't want to read your whole post, they can effectively get it read to them in great detail or just get a summary of the whole post in video format. And I have started many blogs and this is the first time that I have made a habit of creating podcasts and videos for every single post. And another benefit that I have noticed is that people stay on my blog much longer since I started embedding rich media into the blog post. My most popular posts have an average duration of between five and eight minutes, which is really long for a blog post. Step number five is to share the blog post on Pinterest. So the next thing that my assistant does is to create 10 different images to share on Pinterest. So what I do is I write 10 different titles for each blog post. And this is the text that we overlay on top of an image on a vertical pin image. And then, then we drip out these pins at different times on Pinterest using an app called Tailwind. Tailwind makes it really easy to schedule different pins at different times. Creating more than one pin per blog means that you have more opportunities to share your pin and you can test different titles and see which one works the best. To create the actual images, we use Stencil app. Stencil app makes it so fast to create an image and you can literally create each pin in seconds. As soon as I started using Stencil app, I never looked back and I have tried all of the other major image apps, including Photoshop and Stencil app beats them all hands down. It is the easiest and fastest, most intuitive image creation tool I have ever used and I absolutely love it. Step number six is to share the blog post on social media. So my assistant then creates a square image to promote the blog post on social media and she creates that image also using the Stencil app. So I copy some of the text from my blog post and use this as a caption for social media. And then we use Buffer app to schedule the post to various different social media accounts. And the social media accounts that I use to share my blog post is I share it to my Facebook page, I share it to my LinkedIn profile and I share it to my Instagram feed. Step number seven, share the blog post with my email list. So then I write an email to my list and what I normally do is copy and paste the introduction from my blog post 
into the email and then I link to my blog post from there. And I have been experimenting with sharing links directly to my podcast and directly to my YouTube video but most of the time I just like to link straight to my blog post because that is the hub where people can find the text, the audio and the video so I don't need to point people in three different places, they can get them all in the same place and I really want people to visit my website rather than someone else's website like for example YouTube because when they get on YouTube they're going to get distracted by everyone else's videos on there and they're not going to come back and click where I want them to click whereas if they're on my blog post I know that all the links on there are going to take them to sign up for my email list or buy one of my products. The email list provider that I use is called Active Campaign, and I have tried most of the main email list providers and Active Campaign is great for both beginners and all of the has all of the advanced features that you could ever want. I find it so easy to use and it's a very reasonable price compared to some of the more popular email list service providers which I think are extortionate compared to the value that you get from active campaign. Step number eight is to link the blog post from my existing blog posts. So when you create links to your blog posts from some of your existing blog posts, this can help Google to find your new content more quickly. And it also sends a signal to Google that this content this content is valuable because you are linking to it from other places. And I also like to link my link to my blog post so that other people who are actually reading my blog post can find the new blog post from some of my older blog posts that will be currently getting more visitors. Step number nine is to create a short video about my blog post. So the next thing I do fairly often is to grab my phone and make a very short video with one of the main points from the blog post. And this video is usually between 15 to 60 seconds long. And personally, I'm not really somebody who likes to do all the crazy Instagram reels and the TikTok dances. I'm not really into doing the dancing. I've tried a little bit of the pointing to music, but I just find that I just, I really like to create things that I personally like to consume and I don't really like to consume a lot of these, you know, music and pointing kind of things. I would rather just listen to somebody talk. So I just create what I like to see myself and I just like to keep it simple. It's faster, it's easier and you still get the, the message across. If, you know, if the people I want to attract are people who like my content, then they, I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I'm somebody I'm not by doing lots of dances because that's not who I am. So I'm just keeping it simple and talking about one of the points from my blog post. I really want to help people get insights and solve their problems. And I think keeping it simple is the best way to do this. Step number 10 is to share the short video about my blog post. So when I, when I have actually created this short video, I then use my phone and I share it directly to the following places. I share it to TikTok, to YouTube Shorts, to Instagram Reels, to Instagram Stories, and also to Pinterest Stories. And I don't expect to get um, direct traffic back to my blog post from these videos. That's not the intention of sharing these short videos, but what it does do is it broadens my reach and it helps my message to help more people. So I'm hoping that people will follow me and then they will come on and consume some of my mammoth marketing content. And from there, they will join my email list and I can help them get a transformation by paying for one of my products. So now that you know how to create a digital content creation strategy, would you like to know how to grow a tribe of millions with your message? Now, the best way that I know of to reach millions with your message is to start a magnetic movement. And this can really put your business on the map. I have done this numerous times with previous businesses and I am going to reveal the secrets to my method in my brand new masterclass. So if you want to 
learn all the secrets to creating a magnetic movement and growing a massive audience, go and check that out by going to kathkyle.com forward slash millions. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.